Hey, this is Chris from Revenge Performance again. Uh, today we're going to give you a little progress update on the uh, engine removal on our Dodge Stealth all-wheel drive uh, GTX 3576 car. Uh, and the first thing we start with on anything like this is a list. So you'll see here we just have a basic list. We've pulled the engine out of these things, you know, probably dozens of times, maybe more than that. And we know what to do, but it's motivational to have a list and also make sure you don't skip any obvious steps. And if you have extra hands helping you out, uh, they can see something on the list that they can grab and they can do for you. And uh, kind of nobody's button heads so much trying to do the same thing or standing around doing nothing and just drinking up all your beer or anything like that. So it's kind of nice. Uh, and some of these items, we may have too much detail, some not enough. Um, but we're going to kind of talk about some of the things you need to do uh, to take the engine out of a 3000 UT or Dodge Stealth. Uh, whether you have a turbo car or not, or all-wheel drive or not, uh, is going to affect you a little bit, but the concepts are all basically the same. So on our list, we have hood, okay? And the reason that we do the hood is because it's just a heck of a lot easier to get the engine out. Um, not only that, but lately for any major, major services, I'm just taking the hood off because it's super easy. There's only a couple bolts. You have your two bolts there, and you have your two bolts there. Mark them with a sharpie so you can put it back where you got it. And particularly if you got a fiberglass hood here, uh, this weighs like 25 pounds maybe. Uh, I can take it off by myself if I have to uh, with Brent or Hunter or anybody else's help. It's even easier, but it's really no big deal. And you'd be surprised how much better you can see. Uh, so while we're standing here, let's go ahead and take this hood off. And we're back. So you see here in real time, that took 10 seconds. Uh, stock hood is held on with 12 millimeter bolts. Uh, this one's held on with 10. Uh, no big difference, but you can already see here. Or over the lighting here at the shop is pretty dang good. Uh, but when you have a hood on a car, you're always going to have uh, dark spots. And so even by taking the hood off, you can see here it's 10 times brighter. And I'm not super old, but I'm almost 40 and I can't see in the dark like I used to be able to. And so it just feels a lot more comfortable trying to work being able to see here. Uh, so that's the hood. So back to the list. We see here uh, the next thing we're going to do uh, is just pop the wheels off. And uh, we'll do a few things to do the wheels and axles. So I want to show you pulling the wheels off. Nothing really special, but these are PF01 Ankies. And uh, we are dealer dealers for Enki, and so if you need any Enki wheels, please see us. Uh, we also have StopTech brakes. They've been on there a long, long time. And we're dealers for StopTech brakes as well. So from here, you know, obviously you take the wheel off. Hopefully you've done that a few times. Uh, next, we're not going to go through every single step, but basically we're going to be removing uh, the axles, which on a Stealth for 3000 GT, we're going to start with taking this big axle nut out. Uh, it's 32 millimeter hex. So you're going to want to take your car key out. No big deal. Um, when you put these back, the idea to put some anti-seize on here, uh, you may find your car, if it's had a salty life, this is kind of hard to get off. Um, but, you know, just keep at it. They do torque to about 150, uh, so it is pretty tight too. So a big impact wrench, big help. Um, our DeWalt mid-torque really has no issues getting these off. Um, but if you need something a little more powerful than that, you know, there's a lot of good stuff out there nowadays. Uh, next thing you're going to have to do is take off your... Uh, strut knuckle mounting bolts. Uh, we run HKS GT4 uh, coilovers and love them. Uh, this is a coilover originally designed for an Evo. Uh, we sell these uh, and adapters on the site to run any uh, Evo type of strut like an Evo 8 or 9. Uh, so that's going to come loose. Uh, you're going to want to uh, take your brake line, which these are just some stainless brake lines. Uh, StopTech makes those as well. We have those. But you'll take that off your strut as well as your ABS sensor line, because uh, if you try to drop this, that's going to be a limiting factor and probably mess the line up too. Um, the other thing on our list, you may have recalled, is the sway bar. Uh, so you are going to want to take those nuts off your end links. A uh, little tip here, there is a hex inside there. It's usually a 14 millimeter that you can hold and take your nut off, and that way it's not just spinning that ball joint in there and taking that loose. Uh, so basically, once you get that stuff off, uh, you'll be able to uh, start to get the axles out. Uh, on the driver's side, it uh, is a big, long two-piece axle that mounts to the back of the engine here. So if we look down here, your jack shaft here, 
This mounts to the block a little bit higher up with two 14 millimeter head bolts, unless your bolts have been replaced. Uh, so what I'll typically do is take those two bolts loose and then drop this knuckle to get it out of the way, put a jacket on the knuckle, and then you can knock that CV axle inward. And then you can kind of get it pried up a little bit higher. Like you can get this to come from here up above and, you know, get around your brake lines and things and just pull the entire two piece section out of the car at once. Uh, I find that easier than trying to separate this joint here uh, because you just don't have a lot to kind of pry against. And from the factory, there's actually supposed to be a little dust shield here that gets beat up when you try to pry on it. Uh, so the only thing you got to watch out for is trying to get that around all these objects up in here because that little elbow probably can't see that guys, but that little elbow up there goes up and it will kind of foul up on some things in here. Uh, another thing you're going to want to do is take off your plastic guard here. Um, we're temporarily not running one, but you'll have a driver's side plastic guard here. Um, if you are ever exposed to rain, you should run these because this pulley down here will get water in it and ruin that bearing, and that can be pretty expensive. So, and I mean, first time you drive through a really deep puddle, it's going to ruin that bearing, so you're going to want to run that. Uh, so the passenger side going to be exactly the same. Uh, the only difference is with your axle here, you're going to want to put a pry bar between the transmission and the inside of the axle cup here. And give it some sharp wax until that comes out. And that is after you've done all the strut things that we talked about earlier on the passenger side, including removing the wheel and things of that nature. Uh, basically, we got the axle nut out and the strut bolts, except for one. Um, I also forgot earlier that you do have to take the tie rod out. It's not that I really forgot, but just didn't mention it. Uh, so at this point, if your axle's not seized, which they do sometimes, uh, which you might have to put a little punch and tap on that or weigh a lot depending on your problems uh, at that point it's loose okay so what he's gonna do now is jack up by the rotor and um, if you're really caring about scratching up your rotor a blocks fine and good thing um, but honestly I've done worse to this rotor so it's gonna be fine um, what he did is he jacked up on it until this bolt was kind of neutral in here and so you can see it comes out just fine uh, these are little adapters that set your camber with the uh, adapter kit that allows you to run Evo uh, coilovers on your Stealthy 3000 GT. So now this is all loose. So what he's going to do is slowly lower this thing, and we're going to try pushing in on this at the same time, that axle there. So go ahead and let her down, Brent. That'll come loose from here. He's going to have to keep going down to get it the rest of the way out. So we just keep going down, and that's why we took these lines off. And your ABS sensor, because if you don't, you're obviously going to stretch that. And that's really bad on it. All right, stop a sec, Brent. Um, so try again to push in on that. And uh, yeah, you can grip this and kind of pick up on it. And jiggle that out. Go get it out. Yeah. She's almost out. So go ahead and let her down a little more. And this is the other reason that uh, I took the sway bar link loose on the other side. Uh, he's still got this one on here, which should be okay. We're going to try that out. So go ahead and let that down. Yeah, she is. Okay. She's just yeah. sitting on here again. You don't, what you don't want to do is get a pry bar in here and start really prying on these ABS teeth. Those are pretty brittle. They'll break. So kind of use your hands and just kind of work her out. And what he's going to try to do, now that he got that out, um, you're actually going to want to probably go forward with that, Brent. It's okay. going to be a little easier later. Yep. Keep coming. And we'll just clear our brake line here kind of difficult just let that rest now okay so what I'm gonna do now is go into the car and the two bolts to hold to the engine we're gonna loosen those and uh, a lot of times I'll use like a 3 8 ratchet whereas uh, your instinct might be to use you know a pretty big ratchet and things you just can't get it in there and so what I do a lot of times I have a 3 8 snap on ratchet that's about 20 inches long uh, if you don't just get a cheap 3 8 ratchet that you don't really care that much about and put a one inch diameter piece of plumbing pipe or something over it and you can get a lot of leverage that way we're resting on that caliper and that caliper is from 2011 so when it gets tiny little scratches i don't cry anymore but i used to and you can see here she's got her nicks taking wheels on and off 
But if you're worried about that, uh, good idea to just put some blue painter's tape over your caliper. And then when I go underneath there and start shoving this out, it's helpful to have an assistant uh, like our good friend Brent here. And he is going to help pull that out. And it's kind of awkward, but it'll come right out. Like we promised, here's our axle assemblage out. You can see both the jack shaft and the outer shaft is out. Um, looks like we pulled on that boot a little too much. It's not damaged. It's just that joint needs to go back in the cup, which you can fiddle with and get in. Uh, so after this, a wise person will put their knuckle back together a little bit because this is hard on the ball joints and the suspension bushings. And so basically just get her book it back up in there like he's doing here and jack it up. I like to put a screwdriver in there. You can just let off on your jack because uh, obviously lining up the real bolts is much harder and not necessary at this point. Um, but if you really want to, you can get lined up perfectly and spend the time to do that. Put your bolts back in so you don't lose them. Uh, but I really just don't do that most of the time. Uh, so the other side is almost exactly the same. So we're not going to show that. I am going to crawl underneath the car for a second. By the way, if you don't have a full automotive lift, a Ranger Quick Jack is great. Works great. Um, you can see our auto here. Uh, the manuals don't do this badly as far as leaking when you take the axles out. Uh, but the auto seems to leak a lot more, so I should have drained this first. But I'm kind of used to doing the manuals, and a lot of times I don't even drain them if I'm just doing a clutch. And the fluid's relatively new. Um, it just depends on what you feel like here. Um, you can see our billet precision torque converter and our SFI Kigley flex plate. Uh, that stuff's been rock solid. No worries there. And uh, let me see if I can show you where that jack shaft is. So it's kind of dark underneath here, and I'm trying to avoid laying my head in the fluid. Let's see if breaking gets black. Yeah, so you can see where those two bolt holes are, the upper and lower, and those two alignment pins that are in the block to hold that whole bracket there. Uh, the axle shaft out to the wheel um, is exactly the same. For uh, pretty much all makes and models of 3000 GT itself, as far as I know, uh, the differences lie in your passenger side axle on the auto and the manual is a little different and you may have 25 spline axle cups on the inside uh, instead of 27s but as long as you have the right jack shaft here uh, your driver's side is always going to be uh, the same and so I used to actually think that that part on the knuckle was different but they're all exactly the same. They're all 27 splines, no matter what year, make, model, anything you really have. Now, if you are contemplating an auto swap, uh, we'd love to give you some advice. You know, we've done it. We're doing another one soon on a car with a, you know even nicer engine setup than we got. Uh, so I think that's going to be a lot of fun. We'll kind of try to document that. But one big thing is I've seen five of these all-wheel drive autos, and they've all had the 25 spline uh, axle hole here which is the same as the 91 and 92 front wheel drive Stelz for 3000 GT automatic transmissions the front wheel drive one so you have to have that which is kind of hard to get uh, because everybody seems to throw that away uh, so just kind of put some feelers out there and see what you can find uh, there is legend that some of these have a 27 spline I just haven't seen any so I would definitely check that, try to get that axle with your transmission if you buy it. Uh, but uh, other than that, kind of good luck on that part. Um, we are actually just running a standard, um, I think it's a CarQuest new passenger side axle designed for a 91 or 92 front wheel drive automatic car. And no issues yet. Uh, so that's easy to get because the aftermarket remanufactures them. But this... Uh, this little jack shaft, obviously, besides the bearing in it, you know, it really doesn't wear out. So nobody makes it. So make sure you plan to get that because, you know, um, I don't know of any aftermarket solution to that. Dry shaft shop might make something, but, you know, it'd probably be uh, a lot more um, investment than getting a stock one. Start off on these cars. Couldn't really be easier. There's two 14 millimeter head of bolts and a ground wire. And then you got your... Uh, wires that go on your terminals there 
Uh, oh, it's kind of hard to see. Sorry about that. But we're trying to get get up in there. There's some wires up in there, right there. You can see. Uh, tech tip: replace this uh, positive wire if you ever get a chance. Uh, Rock Auto's got them. I think it might be thirty dollars, and it goes all the way from your battery to your starter. And that way you have a great connection and they're all new sealed boots and everything and it fits like OEM. And uh, I, I wish I would have done that sooner. So that works great. And I mean, if you're a purist and you want to get the OEM ones, I think Mitsubishi still makes it. So uh, these Bosch starters have also been real great. I think this one is slowly getting cooked. So we may heat wrap this uh, downpipe here at some point because when the car is uh, kind of fresh off a drag run, it, the starter seems like it's a little slow. So I think that's getting cooked. So we might work on that. Hey guys, we took a little break for lunch, our dinner, and we came back and got the radiator out. Um, this is kind of one of the big things, gives you some more room to work. Uh, now you can get easily to the alternator connections, to remove the electrical connections there. And uh, also you can start working on the bolts down there. Uh, I like to take all the accessory belts off. Uh, just makes it a lot easier getting things out. Um, you can see our Garrett GTX 3071 Gen 2s. And they will be replaced by 3576s. Um, but they have been an excellent turbo. So we got both axles out. And we got the starter out. And a few other things. Here's your passenger side axle. Same situation. Uh, luckily we just run water in this car. Um, so really easy to drain the radiator and things and not make a big mess. So we're just going to keep at it. Well, things are progressing quickly. We got pretty much big chunk of our list done here. So we got the heater hoses. We got the radiator, alternator, air cooler, piping, intakes, axles, wheels, and the hood. We got the battery, transmission lines. Uh, the front and rear motor mounts are loosened. And we're working on the passenger one right now. So we're taking that out. Um, the vacuum and boost lines are all off. We got starter and sway bar. Um, and we have some little bit upside riding here. So you're going to have to use your imagination. But we got the power steering pump off. Uh, something to note about that. Um, it's a lot easier just to take the pump off the engine and leave it. Than trying to mess with the lines and having to re-bleed it and leak everywhere. And you just basically take the tensioner bolt and then the bolt above that out. Now on the back side of the engine here, there's a stud right there. You can see it right in the middle. And then there's just a nut. And then that whole thing will just slip right off. Uh, we also took the plenum and stuff off. Uh, one thing to be really conscious of is kind of where things lie. Like we have this remote oil pressure sensor here. And every time we take something off, we're kind of moving it to an area where it's going to be safe when the engine comes out. Um, so basically... All we have left is the AC compressor, the oil cooler lines, and a couple more motor mounts, and we'll be able to lift this thing out. As far as the AC compressor goes, once the alternator's out, very easy to see here. Um, there's some differences between first and second gen. I believe the first gen actually has four bolts, or the second gen has four bolts, and the first has three. So you basically got that bolt, and that bolt, and there's kind of two down there somewhere that you probably want to reach in the bottom. They're a 12 millimeter head. Uh, this top one by the line. Um, I don't know if we have our lines a little tweaked to fit the header kit, but I typically can't get that out. And so you just loosen it kind of as you go and you're fine. You just can't clear that line there. Uh, it's important to not disturb the air, uh, air compressor lines too much because they can leak. And so we always just take the uh, compressor off. That way we don't have to recharge the AC. Uh, yes, this car does have functional AC, and I'm hoping it'll continue to do so. Uh, even with some of the goals we have going forward, we don't really see that being a huge impediment. Uh, we may end up deleting the cruise control, because I'm just getting tired of looking at that octopus there. It goes everywhere under the hood. And uh, on these bigger turbo cars, it doesn't work great anyway, because the stock uh, computer will tend to, uh, the cruise control computer will tend to over-exaggerate its throttle inputs, and... Uh, not make for a smooth driving experience anyway, and so it doesn't really work well enough to justify always keeping it um, But we're gonna keep at it. Uh, I think we may actually get this out tonight the way it's going um, It's going pretty smooth Hey, so we're just about the final steps of this engine removal on our Dodge Self here 
And uh, I would highly recommend getting some type of load leveling system here. Um, they're pretty much everywhere because domestic V8s use them a lot and things like that. Uh, we kind of got, you know, it's not a Lamborghini here, but it's a little bit better uh, quality than the swallowest one they usually make. Uh, just because this unit has like a bearing system here, whereas like the ones rated for less, it's kind of a, just an arm that moves around. And this is a little more stable, um, plus you get a lot of nice chain and a big hook here. Um, when you got your cherry picker hook with you, which we've just misplaced in our move, you just kind of hook that onto this big hook here, so it's really fast. Uh, so Brent's got to put some load on this. Uh, right now, we still have the driver's side uh, motor mount stud kind of loosely fitted here. So uh, it's, it's easiest, just take a little load off of that. To try to get this loose um, you can jack the motor up you just got to be really careful not to jack it up by the oil pan because that can interfere with your oil pickup and cause you a spun bearing uh, what I do a lot of times is you can just get like a 2x4 piece and jack up on the uh, AC compressor bracket and that'll lift them up and it's made out of cast iron so it's not gonna break but since we're pulling the engine out anyway uh, we're gonna go ahead and just use the engine hoist to try to get the load off this mount uh, this is one of our solid mounts we offer it's been really nice um, it's a really quality piece, powder coated, high strength, uh, no issues. There's no spacers to fall out or anything like that. It's really well made here. Um, so let's see, we got these three bolts loose here. Uh, so Brent must have the level about right because the stud is loose. Uh, from the factory, you're gonna have two little uh, 14 millimeter headed bolts, I believe. They're either 14, yeah, they're 14. And then there's a 17 millimeter nut that holds the stud in. Uh, to be honest with you, we're getting a little more picky and picky about weight loss. And so I don't actually put those nuts back. But I do leave the studs in the body because it does keep that stud from rotating, uh, which is nice. Um, we'll see if we can sneak this by this intercooler pipe because this goes down uh, to our core. And so that's going to be a little bit of a hassle to try to get out. So let me see if I can get this stud out. Yep, there's enough flex in there. We can get this stud out. Um, like I'm always recommending, you know, put your nuts back. Uh, you know, we got a big supply of flat washers and stuff, so not a big deal. But this is a fine thread of bolt, and so if you don't always have a fine thread nut, uh, you could be in a pinch when you go to put this back. And if you lose this stud, you're going to lose the benefits of this anti-rotation here and this extra support if you put the nuts back in. So it's best to keep the factory stud for that. So honestly, I think we're going to try to leave this on here. Uh, this, this actual motor mount bracket, we'll kind of have to see if it'll get past this air cooler pipe um, But it's not like hurting anything at the moment and everything's just a little bit easier once we get the motor out uh, I do have the front and rear bolts here If we look hopefully there's no load on them, but that's kind of what the load leveler is for for one thing um, Kind of hard to see down here, but behind this turbocharger uh, There is a bolt and so right now it's got some load on it. Can you pick up a little bit Brent? Yep Okay, a little more, starting to loosen. Okay, that's still pretty tight. Yeah, it's slowly starting to come out. Uh, kind of what can help sometimes is, I might need a smaller one, but you can get a pry bar behind the head of the bolt down here. That'll help. Let me just scooch under here and see if I can get that. See this down here? You trust me, this bolt's down here, I'm finding it out. Always keep your fingers safe, because when you pry these bolts out, your load's gonna shift, most likely. So when you guys kind of rock the engine back and forth, yeah. Um, we do have this jack on the transmission yet too, Brent, which might have caused an issue. All right, try going up a little more. All right. Got it. Got the bolt here. This is a non-factory bolt here. I'll point out, I tend to point these just to make it easier. Because when you go to put this back in, it's a little tricky getting that lined up and this won't hurt anything. Uh, if you're going to do this, leave the nut on. Take your grinder or whatever to this smoothly in a cone and when you screw the nut back out it's going to deburr kind of any burrs you raise doing that okay so we did end up removing the motor mount itself just to save a little space here 
clearing that air cooler pipe. Uh, we had to jack up on the transmission just a little bit. Uh, let's take the twist out to get the uh, rear motor mount bolt out. And now we got everything loose. And so this is a good time to have a friend um, because we're gonna go up and they're probably gonna have to like, you know, wiggle little throttle cables and stuff out of the way and just generally keep an eye on things. Um, it's just like, you can easily tear wires up with your engine hoist, obviously. Um, AC compressor, you wanna make sure that's out of the way. That sort of thing. And then the other kind of thing you wanna be aware of is your transmission to passenger uh, frame well clearance here. Uh, so that's gonna take a little bit of finagling. If you get all the way up against there, you're gonna have an issue. So basically, once you get your engine up a little bit here, you just wanna watch your crank pulley doesn't hit the frame, but I'm probably gonna to have to shove this engine to the driver's side just a little bit. And the automatic and the six speed are both pretty long. Five speed's a little bit easier. I think we're pretty well clear. Might fight you a little bit coming up, Brent, but let's just lift her on up. Let's get your wires out of the way here. We're gonna wrap all this wiring finish that loom up. I knew we were taking the engine out so we kind of left that for this. Once the motor's out it'll be a little bit easier. So he's just coming out and it is going to make a big mess. This is all just water. You're going to lose a little motor oil out of your oil cooler fittings as well. Okay we're stuck on this pipe here. Just keep on coming. I'm just trying not to gouge up this uh, nice fluid damper pulley we got. Um, we're probably going to have a few of these on the website soon. Um, but if not, just reach out. We can tell you where to get one. So, coming on up. And this is really why it's easier to take the hood off. I have taken one of these out with the hood on just to kind of prove I could do it. But it's not a lot of fun. You really got to have your lift set right. So, hey, you just kind of keep looking, and this is why it's real helpful to not try to do this by yourself. Just keep looking to make sure you're not caught on anything, uh, like he's got there. You want me to jack up on that while you yeah. lift? So, we're just going to keep going here. Looks like we're coming up just fine. times like this I kind of want one of those pneumatic powered engine hoist but hey that's uh, for another day okay um, we're just dropping a couple of hose clamps and whatnot off nothing serious here pretty well clear just make sure this throttle cable didn't get hung up and uh, everything else that's really looking like we're utterly clear and so, Brandon, if you just want to back up, you should be good. Obviously, you take your time backing up. Got a lot of weight hanging out there, especially with the uh, transmission attached. He's just going to slowly kind of wiggle that. Cherry picker's old. Floor's not level. So, it's going to take a little bit of wiggling here. I think right now... He's just got the leg caught on jack, so. So we're coming on out. Kind of everybody's worst nightmare to drop this on the fender, um, but never had that happen. Just be careful with your riggings and things. And really, as soon as you get to clear the car, you wanna start lowering it. And uh, looks like I left a wrench down here. Okay. So go ahead, Brent, you can lower it. Try not to get a real touchy jack if you do this. That's not fun. So we're coming on down. Uh, so today, uh, we just really wanted to get this out. Uh, we got a lot of other client work to do. And uh, tomorrow, or Monday, or Sunday, depending on kind of how I'm feeling, how we're feeling, we may come put this on the engine uh, stand. We got a pretty nice uh, new engine stand from Eastwood. 
not sponsored by them or anything, but they got some good stuff. And they have an engine stand that has like a rotating gear set in it. And so one of the problems we've had with normal ones is these engines are so top heavy with the turbochargers and heads attached that when you're trying to rotate your engine, it just flips over, you know, and it's just really irritating. And like being able to work on the engine at any angle with one of these geared ones makes it really nice because you can rotate it at 45 degrees or kind of whatever you need. So we'll have to take the transmission off, of course, um, which is not that hard. Kind of the hardest part of that is we're going to want to get underneath of it and remove the torque converter bolts. Probably should have done that while the engine was in, but it was just getting late last night and I didn't want to do it. Um, but we'll get those out and then we can take the trans off and you mount these on the engine stands like most engines by the bell housing bolt holes. And uh, hopefully we can shoot a little bit on kind of how that works because I know uh, there's not a lot of info out there on just doing that. It's not hard, but I know for people that are doing it the first time, they kind of question whether or not it's going to be a strong enough configuration, things of that nature. So we're just trying to make you feel better about that. So these were our GTX 3071s, Generation 2, working great. Um, but we are going to upgrade to the 3576. Uh, you can see a little bit of oil in the back one, and that's actually because we were still running our rear valve cover breather into the rear intake pipe instead of a catch can, and so you're bound to get a little bit of oil like that. It's in no way indication of the turbo having problems or anything like that. So that's it. Uh, we got some editing to do before we get this video up to you, um, but I hope that this was uh, helpful. Kind of gave you some tips here, kind of gave you a feel for what we're kind of up to with our own shop car. We don't work on a lot of other people's cars just because we have so many transmissions and things to do. And uh, so, but it's it's kind of fun to do this to our own car and things like that rather than just, you know, drool over everybody else's. So uh, please subscribe to the channel and leave some comments and likes if you like this sort of thing. Um, we don't do a lot of this. So if we're doing anything that makes this video unpleasant for you to watch, you know, I'm definitely not against any kind of feedback as um, long as it's, you know, tempting to be constructive. So thanks, and let us know if we can ever get some revenge on your ride.